What's up guys, this is Mike Loris, and I'm going to be bringing you more games from the Star Series Season 3. It's going to be, this is going to be between Dare on the Radiant and Fnatic RC on the Dire. Now, fair warning, I am kind of sleepy right now, so I'm probably not going to be all that accurate or anything like that. But that should be fine, because my casts aren't good that en anyway, so... How could it possibly get any worse? Fnatic RC can open up with Chen as well as Lashrak, so they have a ton of early pushing power. Edict on Lashrak, Chen with whatever he manages to find in the jungle. Push down Dara very aggressively if they choose to do so. However, from what I've seen from Fnatic, they tend to be a little bit more cautious just as a team. But I'm sure they won't let that caution get the better of them, and they'll actually get some early towers. Dara, they're going to go for the Invoker, Venomancer, as well as the Tidehunter. So it's some, uh, a lot of lane control there. Venomancer, very good at controlling a lane. Invoker, very good at handling a lane, handling a lane by himself. And of course, the Tidehunter, uh, kind of so similar to the Venomancer. Invoker most likely will get a solo lane. Some bands looking a little bit strange right now. Lone Druid, Broodmother ban, Enigma ban, not really seen all that often. The Lone Druid as well as the Broodmother offer Fnatic a lot of pushing potential, and you can see Fnatic already kind of gearing up for a giant push. So I guess Dara just don't want to deal with that. Morphling going to be the final pickup for Fnatic RC. And I was going to say something else. Uh, yeah, so this tournament is, I think, drawing to a close. I actually have no idea. I haven't been watching any of this new stuff. I haven't watched any of this stuff at all, except for when I'm, you know, watching it right now. So I am spoiler free, so which is very nice. And also, I just hit 100 subscribers. Yay! Thank you, all 100 of you, for watching. And now you can tell your friends, and then they'll be like, what, why would I watch that? And then you'll be like, um, because, yeah. And then it'll stick at 100. It'll slowly go up, and then in the matter of months, I will have 105. It'll be amazing. That growth rate, that growth rate. A lot of carry pans being removed from the pool. Naga Siren, as well as Anti-Mage, removed from Fnatic. Removed by Fnatic, because... Well, Dara, they're kind of carry light. They don't have someone to really do the heavy damage later on. And Dara, they're going to ban out the Nature's Prophet as well as the TA. TA is the potential mid for Fnatic. And the uh, Nature's Prophet, of course. An alternate to the jungle, but mostly on that long lane. Going to get that global presence. Dara, do not want to deal with any of those annoying long lane heroes. They're going to pick up the Night Stalker. I've seen them run this a couple times. It's been decently effective. Problem is, if Dara pick up another hero that goes, like, on the long lane, if they pick up a Beastmaster, a Windrunner, or, you know, a Bounty Hunter, or any of those types of heroes, actually, that's that's pretty much it, then uh, then they're going to be forced to end this game early. You've seen a couple of games where that has been the case, and I actually think it was Dara, was it Dara that did this? It was Dare. It might have been. No, it was Dare. I feel like it was. And they had to end the game early and they just couldn't finish it out, even though they had a very early advantage. But Fnatic with that Morphling pick, they do have late game security. They have a ton of lockdown power as well. Stunning action from the Sand King, as well as the Lestrak, and then whatever the Chen manages to pull out. So it's a pretty good combo right there. Fnatic just have to touch up their lanes just a little bit. Then this should be fine to rock and roll Dare. On the other hand, they have a couple of good lanes as well. They need that long lane unless they want to aggressively try lane it. But either way, they do need a hero to solo. And that should be a hero that requires a little bit more farm, or at least thrives with more farm. Maybe a Queen of Pain, and then you get uh, Queen of Pain solo, Invoker solo, and then Night Stalker try lane. Of course, when you, knight, when you uh, try lane a Night Stalker, then um, I mean, he doesn't get high levels. He gets a lot of gold, but really Night Stalker in the early stages needs both and tri lane kind of kills that. That's why you see Night Stalkers solo mid lane in pub games and really uh, occasionally in pro games depending on what the other enemy what the enemy team has. They're going to go for that bounty hunter, so they have a lot of chasing potential. The late game, I mean, between the Night Stalker and Bounty Hunter, they have an okay late game, but Fnatic with that morphling pick, they definitely have the superior late game. So they're they're on a clock. They got to win within eh, 35 minutes, I feel. And then after that or at least, like, relentlessly hunt down the Morphling, and then extend their... essentially extend the early, mid-stage of the game, because Morphling won't have anything by then. So that is going to be the game plan for Dara Fnatic. They have a pretty good ganking squad, as well as a, 
uh, that gank, same ganking squad is going to be offering the Morphling quite a bit of protection. So Fnatic could play a little bit more laid back, which I feel like that kind of plays right into their comfort zone, being a little, a little bit more of a cautious, careful team. Well, if you just have to protect the Morphling all day, then that's, that's perfect. You just protect the Morphling. You get kills when people dive on you, and other than that, you should be fine. But Dara, they have a lot of individual chasing power, a little bit of team fight mixed in as well. But primarily on an individual basis, Night Stalker's silence will be so devastating this game. Shut down the Morphling, Sand King escapes, the Shrax, spell casts, and then kill Chen also. Fnatic, they're going to go with the CK on top of this. So they're going to go for even more stunning power. Also get a little bit more security in the late game. So yeah, Fnatic, they could take all day. They don't have to do anything. They could just farm up. And then they'll win in the late game. Although, with the lineup that they have, you're going to expect the CK, Lashrac, and Sand King to probably be very active along the map. Get those ganks off. Keep in mind that this is still 0.74. Yes, I know, I know. I'm trying to get there as fast as I can, guys. But, unfortunately, the uh, as more games get played, they push the replays like back further and further. So I don't know when the uh, new patch is going to be played. But I'm sure you will see it. It's going to be pretty obvious, actually. So, on the Fnatic RC side, we have Not Hacks playing the Sand King, standing in. Schneckles on the Morphling. Looks like to be soloing the mid lane. Did he get some. I think he got some uh, restoratives transferred to him. No Tail is going to be playing the Chen. Fitzky on the Lashrak, and Era is going to be left on the CK on the top lane. Hawkeye for Dare, the classic uh, long lane Hawkeye bounty hunter. Grumpy is going to be supporting as a Tidehunter Nose in the mid lane as an Invoker. Savadoom supporting as the Venomancer, and that leaves nowhere on that Night Stalker on the bot lane. Already with two Gauntlets of Strength, gonna go for that Urn of Shadows. 30 seconds to battle. So yeah, as I was saying before, Dare, they have to make things happen in the early stages of the game. Bounty Hunter this top lane is gonna be up against the two and a half lane, at least. So he's probably not gonna get all that much done. Avoid into a Split Earth is, or uh, I mean, a uh, Chaos Bolt into a Split Earth is a pretty sick combo. And I'm assuming Fitzky is going to stay up there. He's actually moving down. Shekels is positioned to solo the mid lane, so he's going to be doing that versus the Invoker. He should have an okay time there. Now the Hacks on the Sand King is going to have a crappy, crappy time versus Savadoom and Grumpy. And then, you know, occasionally no the uh, Void from Nowhere also going to chip in for a little bit of damage as well. Regeneration. But it's going to be be yeah, Fitzky is moving around. Maybe he was just he was just warding. Okay, that's what he was doing. So he's gonna be on this top lane doing the pulls, supporting Era. That means the bounty hunter's got to be real, real careful because a single stun from that chaos bolt, and he's probably gonna go down. Not till uh, level one, uh, level two or three though. So he should have a couple levels of freedom, but really that freedom is not gonna be. <laughs> it's gonna be short lived to say the least. Knows is going for an Exhort Builder, at least taking a point at level 1. Hawkeye is going to take a 2 second stun. Fitzky there with the Chain Stun. It is going to latch on Hawkeye, and he's going to take a lot of damage here, but he's going to walk outside the range of the Sentry Ward. Are they going to drop down another one? No, they're not going to. They're going to let Hawkeye live. But now Hawkeye is in the middle of freaking nowhere. He's going to find no tail, but he can't do anything about that. So Hawkeye essentially uh, getting, essentially getting killed. I mean, he didn't lose anything, but he's not gaining anything. He has no opportunities to get in, and Fitzky is still zoning him out very hard. So for all intents and purposes, Hawkeye is not even in this game. No one hacks. Same situation there. He does have boots, though. Very smart pickup from him. I actually like this a lot. You'd see the Venomancer and then get out. And then take a couple of uh, less, couple less right clicks. A take, a, take fewer right clicks from Savadoom once that Gale does land. Looks like Hawk is, uh, Hawkeye is going to be messing around with Chen, who's doing a little bit of pulling. No, he's not. He's just... Uh, Pissing them off with that shockwave. Midway in the mid lane, Schneckles 7 for 4 versus 4 for 3. See so the Invoker, yeah, not having a fun time, but as he gets more and more points of that Exhort, he's going to have an easier time. Get more damage, although he's going to take a waveform from Schneckles. Schneckles might have enough to kill this guy. He needs one more right click, and it's not going to be enough as he hides in the tree. Schneckles close to getting a solo kill in the mid lane. And if a Morphling gets a solo kill, that is just amazing for your team. Hawkeye still spotting things out hasn't really done anything yet. He's going to find No-Tail with an Illusion Rune. But that's about it, because No-Tail, I mean, he's not going to come out until he really needs to, because right now, Era is getting a free time farming, so you don't really have to push that lane. 
because doing so will actually probably diminish this farm that CK can get. So, uh, No Tails content to just farm up that jungle. Fitzky also content to do the pulls. He doesn't have much experience, but Era is really the important one there. He's getting everything in the world. And as long as Fitzky keeps the creep equilibrium in, uh, near the tier 1 top tower, then Era will continue to get everything in the world. Schneckles is still having a. Well, actually, tied up with the Invoker. So, yeah, the Invoker with that level 2 on the XOR, just getting a little bit more base damage. Pressuring back the Morphling that much more, and not a hack still with absolutely nothing. Didn't even get a single point of experience nowhere. Kind of in the same situation as Era, where he's just getting everything that he needs. He's getting a little bit of support, but the thing is, from Darer, is that they don't have a dedicated jungler. You have Savadoom, who's you know, actively keeping the Sand King back. And, and although that's an important role, it's not exactly helping uh, the team as much as if he was just jungling. I mean, Grumpy is essentially the jungler, but he's reliant on these creep pulls, whereas No Tail is doing uh, individual jungling by himself, and Fitzgy is getting pulls, you know, doubles camps pulls there. So I Fnatic should be getting the upper hand as far as the farm goes. You can see. I mean, it's not really that huge at all, but just the minor bonuses at the stage of the game, that can mean the difference between a level 2 and a level 3, and that can mean a kill. Shekel's going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nose, taking a lot of damage from that Exhort. He's going to start strength morphing. He does have enough for a waveform, but if he does do that, he's going to eat even more tower shots. He's going to waveform in. He might go for this one. Oh, it's going to be close. 12 HP on the Invoker, and it looks like they both will live. Sunstrike. Ooh, Hawkeye, did he see him? Sunstrike isn't high enough level to kill this Morphling. But you know this invoker is looking for it. It's 225 pure damage. Hawkeye gonna get a hit off on Schneckles, and it's not gonna be enough to kill him. Well, didn't even hit. Schneckles is probably a little bit scared now. He saw his entire watery life flash before his eyes, and he didn't like what he saw. Hawkeye is still doing a little bit of harassment, but he's gotta watch out. It's not a hack. With the Sand King, has had enough of that bot lane. He only has level one burrow strike, and the range is absolute crap. But if he but if he could get close enough to actually get a burst strike onto this bounty hunter, then the bounty hunter is probably gonna die with the waveform. Actually, you know, he should be fine until the bottle gets back from the uh from you know, bottle crowing. Or I guess bottle frogging. You know, it's called bottle crowing because in Dota One it was actually a crow. You would have a chicken or okay, at first in Dota One a while ago, your courier would always be a chicken. And then when you upgraded it, then it would become a crow. And I remember playing when you couldn't upgrade it. That was that was pretty interesting. But then you could like change it into the walking core into like a penguin, into like a pig and like a snail and stuff like that. It was really pointless. But people loved it. And then it, when you upgraded it to a flying it would turn into a crow. So that was hence the term bottle crowing. Also in Dota One, you could like change the color of the water. You just type out like dash water red, I think it was, or like water green, whatever stuff like that, and then you could also do weather snow, and then you have the most annoying, dizzying snow coming across your screen. Like it was horrible. You couldn't see what was happening. I would literally get nauseous. Uh, weather rain was the would have rain coming from the sky. It wasn't as bad as the snow, but it was still pretty bad. But my favorite was weather moonlight. Weather moonlight. It would just have like some beams of moonlight. It would just uh, be a little bit of twilighty stuff there. That was actually pretty cool. And those are the features of Dota 1 as we have a pause for some reason. So we're just going to go ahead and speed through this, guys. And we're going, we're going, we're going. And we're cutting just to save you guys some time. And we're back. There we go. How efficient. Oh, Nota Hacks, getting a smoke reveal, revealed off from Hawkeye, and really, that smoke dispel range isn't going to get him enough time to get close enough for a level 1 burst strike. Nota Hacks needs something. He's not, he might find it on the spot lane, actually. If this tower does go down, the creep wave is going to be in this area, and then Sand King does have the opportunity to get some experience. No Tail coming around with an Ursa Warrior. Teleportation coming in as well. It's going to be the CK, so this could be something big. Nowhere is going to get two seconds done. Clap as well. Nota Hacks looking for that burst strike, but he's very far away. There's the burst strike onto the Night Stalker, and there's first blood. Going to Era. Fnatic draw first blood. Dara getting a little bit too over aggressive in this tower. Ooh, a little bit off of that deny mark. One, uh, you need 10% of a tower to deny it. So, at least Dara didn't give them a deny and a first blood. Just a first blood, and 
Can I say just the first blood? It's never a good idea to give the enemy first blood. Unless you take like three kills after that. In th which case, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. But clearly a zero for one trade. Not worth it. And especially since it went on the Chaos Knight, it's going to be doubly not worth it since CK can use early gold very, very well. Get the drums up earlier, get a lot more mobility, get a lot more mana, and then get a lot more kills in turn. So in the top lane, Hawkeye, he's getting a little bit of an opportunity to get something. He's going, he already has a poor man's shield, probably going to go for a set of drums. You know that drums in Dota 1 is called Django of Endurance? Before? I mean, I've never heard of a Django before, but apparently it's a drum. Sure, I mean, pff, people who made Dota 1, I guess Ice Frog and his team are very cultured. Not so. So yeah, lots of uh, Dota 1 history going on there. Schneckel's going to wait for him in. Sunstrike is going to hit. I feel like Nose would have been better off just quickly invoking a cold snap with three illusions there and with Morphling already using his waveform. That could have been a kill, I feel. But Noah's already had Sunstrike up, and he went and said to Ice Wall. So, yeah, I don't know about that. Era level 6 versus the level 5 Hawkeye now. He's getting a lot of Janata, so he could do a little bit of physical burst. But still, he's only level 9. CK is level 6. He has a ton more gold. So he's just going to bully Hawkeye out of this lane. Can't really do anything about that as the bounty hunter because, well, you don't have any assets. Nowhere has picked up the power treads as his first item. Looks like they're going to use this Night Stalker's first knight purely to push this tower and you know maybe take another tower in the mid lane or top lane. But this tower is so so dead. There's nothing Fnatic could do to defend this. Fortification gonna slow them down as Fitzy trying to get into position, but the ward blocking them off. And the tower does go down, destroyed by the Radiant. Nowhere does have a point of silence, he's gonna get that stun onto Nauta Hacks. Gale as well, but he's going to get sent back to the base. Gush might be a mistake. It is going to be a mistake as Grumpy gets a free kill on Sand King. Man, Chen, I mean, test of faith. Is a, or no, it was Holy Persuasion at this point. So Holy Persuasion, yeah, it's it's uh, it's fast, but it's not that fast. So Sand King completely threw away his life. If he just stood there in the Sandstorm, he would have been completely okay. Throw striking through, though, a little bit too overaggressive, and it does give Dara a free kill. Sand King delivery. Now if a smoke is nowhere is going to run into Schneckles, now he's going to fall back. It's actually going to be Fitzky who's in a lot of trouble. Here comes Nowhere around the corner. He gets smoke revealed and he does see that Lestrak. Lestrak is going to try for the split earth. Not going to hit. Instead, they're going to go for the Morphling. The high priority target. Sunstrike is going to hit. Do they have a Void? Void is up and it's not going to be casted. Schneckles does get away. He does have a regeneration rune as well. I'm not going to pop that because of the poison damage and they do let the Morphling get away. The Void wasn't going to be enough to kill him, so fair enough, saving his mana, nothing was going to happen there anyway, the Morphling would have been fine regardless, so. Dare, not making much out of this first night, the Night Soccer did pick up a tower, and he's uh, level 6. Let's take a look at some of the levels, level 7, level 7, yeah, level 7, so level 6 is, it's decent, but Night Stalker, his first night is really what dictates the rest of the game for him. And if he's just spending it farming, then, well, he's going to get heavier in the second night. But the first night is when Night Stalker is really stronger than every other hero in the map. Like, Night Stalker does get stronger, but then again, CK also gets a lot stronger. Not a hacks might be in a little bit of trouble. Nowhere does have mana for both spells. There's the instant sandstorm. Nowhere was clearly in range of that sand king. He does have vision, though, so he's just going to silence him and not a hacks. Try and teleport out. Sunstrike is going to be enough as Night Stalker gets a kill. It's very, very close on that Sun Strike. Hitting the Sand King just on the edge and just in time as well. How did he see him actually? Oh, well, that's that's unfortunate for the Sand King. Sentry Ward from before. He probably just looked at the Night Stalker and say, oh, he doesn't have any detection. I'm fine to sit here. And the Night Stalker kind of like made him believe that. Like he's didn't attack him straight on. He's like, oh shit, he's Sandstorm. Better attack some creeps and get some last hits. And all of a sudden, here comes the stun. Savadoom's so gonna take your reality rift. Four second stun on him, gonna transition into the split earth. The edict damage there to help as well. Grumpy moving into position, but he's not yet level six. He needs a ravage here. He's gonna instead walk up forward for an anchor smash. Gonna go for error. Cold Snap is gonna get a kill there. Lots of bonus gold for the team. Fitzky now on the run. Hawkeye needs another track to get his team's movement speed. Sunstrike is going to hit. And the anchor smash is going to annihilate Lestrak. Actually, it's Hawkeye who gets that kill. With that level 3 Janata. 
Unfortunately, the track was not on the last track, but the track was on that other hero. Now, Nodhack's going to be in a little bit of trouble. Nowhere on the chase. And the Hand of God is going to keep him alive for now, but nowhere is also out of mana, so the Sand King should be fine. In the meantime, the mid lane, Knuckles is in no tail. Going to be pushing down this mid tier 1. Purple is moving in. Sava Doom, level 3 ward is going to throw out a Gale, but this tower is forfeit. Unless you get a really pimp deny, no, it's not going to happen. Morphling does get the tower. Teleportation, lots of people, tel people teleporting from Fnatic. Maybe they're expecting a counter push from Dara. I don't think they're going to do that. I mean, Grumpy's around, has hit that level 6 mark. But Savadoom seems fine farming. He's getting some experience, he's getting some gold. It's always good to have a little bit more on those support heroes so they're not just pure food. Yeah, it's usually good to have a little bit of bulk on your support heroes. And who knows, maybe they could get a pipe, maybe they could get some arcane boots. Hell yeah, what a luxury. 4 for 2, Darer have taken down one tower, Fnatic have taken down one of their own as well. So it should be pretty even, yeah, it's fairly even XP in, fa in favor of Darer slightly as they are smoked up looking for another target to gank the gush into that level, and that's not Sand King, I think he's on the other team. They're going to find someone, they're going to find Error. there goes the gush, Cold Snap follows well, Gale going to slow him down, Sunstrike going to hit perfectly, Error taking a ton of damage, Meteor on top of the f head as well, as he does go down, track bonus as well. And this giant army, no tails, completely buffered by these creeps. He's no wait. Why did you move your creeps? Gumby gonna move forward for that ravage. He's probably gonna go down to this tower, but not before Hawkeye does pick up that kill. Now the wait for him from Shekel is going to take out that Tide Hunter Hawkeye. Now in tower range, still unable to escape from there. The edict damage is enough. Not a hack's gonna go toe to toe with nowhere in Savajum. Not a fight that he wants to take, and he's gonna go down from that one. 7 to 4 as Knuckles looking for more picks. He does have an invisibility rune. He's going to pop that off right now. Going to go for Sava Doom. Wait for him in. Is going to hit. And he should be able to take down this Venomancer. He's a little bit faster, at least, or he's even. That magic stick charge. But Fisky is going to get initiated upon him again by Nowhere, who gets a very easy kill. He's going to probably die to this Edict. One more Reckless from the Morphling does buy him that kill. And Sava Doom somehow miraculously surviving. Grumpy teleporting back into this fight. But Era is also back in this fight, and the Tidehunter, weak Venomancer, cannot take Schneckles and Era. Not a chance. Especially with all of Chen's creeps still around. So a very aggressive dive from Dara. They did use the Ravage, but I mean, there was a lot of creeps there. And the Lashrak just popped off the Edict in the jungle and got a lot of free damage. Split Earth also hit too. Schneckles is going to get initiated upon, but Era is still here. Hawkeye. Oh, he gets revealed. Shinada is going to hit him, but Schneckles just wait for him straight in for Sava Doom. Did he not heal from that? Huge burst damage there. Schneckles is now on the run. He should be fine. Nowhere is on the chase, and the rest of the team, uh, the rest of the Fnatic team are separated. They should also be fine. Hawkeye is scouting out. He's looking for anyone he could find. Are there any sentry wards? Hawkeye get, does get revealed. Take a burrow strike. Split Earth as well. Do they know where he is? I don't think they see him. They're just blinding it right now. They almost kill the Bounty Hunter. Reality Rift is going to go on to the Invoker, who also pops into Invisibility. So Fnatic really needs some Invisibility Detection right now. That was two kills that they let slip away. If they had Detection, then, well, that would have been two extra kills for them. That would have meant a Tier 1 Tower as well. They could probably still go for that Tier 1 Tower, though. I mean, Chen has a pretty healthy Creep Army. He should have Hand of God soon. He does have it up, so he could heal all of his Creeps if he wanted to. Also give a little bit more durability to Schneckles who is currently very weak, fighting off some Ursas in the jungle. But instead it's going to be a smoke, no tail and not a hacks, looking towards the mid lane, where nowhere is farming, it is daytime, but he does have that darkness available to him. So this could be a very risky gank, if they go now they're going to get squished, because Hawkeye is also here. Now with that shadow walk up, he's going to scout up this high ground reveal off that smoke, and now they know where he is. Sentry Ward. Lay down the Sentry Ward, No Tail. Oh my god. They're going to dive right in. Get a net onto Nowhere. Burst Strike. Going to hit both of them. Beautiful Burst Strike. This Morphling Waveform is in. Going to go for that Invoker. No, he goes into the Ghost Walk. The Ravage now. Going to hit everyone from the Fnatic side. As Grumpy instantly takes down that Sand King. The Hand of God does go down. Nose is on the run. He's going to be just fine as Fnatic have lost two. And Fnatic, why you know Sentry Ward, man? That Sentry Ward was the latest Sentry Ward I've ever seen. They let Invoker slip away complete huge mistake and let the bounty hunters spot them out i mean they got revealed and that's clearly the bounty hunter is going to be there you just got revealed who else is it going to be let's i mean maybe it's not the bounty hunter maybe it's someone else in an invisibility room but still lay down the sentry ward try to get a disable there even though Fnatic had a beautiful barrel strike unfortunately did not go for them because the ravage oh no hawkeye is still in the tower range he's going to take a ton of damage he's trying to run away but not the hacks is going to go straight for sava doom actually bro strike him but the Fnatic, I feel like they let Hawkeye walk away. It was right there. That was in tower range. They saw him. 
is under attack. I don't know what happened there. Fnatic kind of let Bounty Hunter slip away. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I, don't, I have no idea. Jackals is going to go way for him in. He's out of mana, so he's going to take a little bit of damage here. But Dara popping the Ravage very well, and Night Stalker also, as I said before, did have that darkness available to him. Pop that off, make good use of it as well. He's going to be heading towards a Vanguard. He's going to counter off a lot of the physical damage coming out from Fnatic. Morphling and CK especially, you're going to be very sad about that. They do have some pretty good magic bursts, so they could still tear through this Night Stalker through magical damage. Hawkeye scouting out. But yeah, Fnatic, I mean, 10-6, to six, they're a little bit behind. It's still not that major. Knuckles is going to go for a straight match style. 73 for 11, 301 on the Morphling. So Fnatic, they're still in pretty prime condition. They have the Morphling, who's very farmed. They have the Chaos Knight, who... Not as far, but he's getting a little bit of free time to get some creep kills now. And Dare, I mean, they are, again, on a clock. And they're playing it decently so far. But really, the problem heroes are the Morphling and the CK. CK has died twice, which is fantastic, but Morphling has yet to die. And with the chasing power that they have, Dare, they should be able to kill this Morphling. I say they should, but they're not going to yet. They haven't tried, or they have tried, but not successfully. The Morphling is the really the high priority target, because if the Morphling gets farmed, the faster he gets his farm, the more kills he gets, the more creep kills he gets. The faster that quote unquote late stage of the game will come, at least for the Morphling, like relatively speaking. So the Morphling will be completely stacked on items, and then he'll be able to do act in such a way that will make you think it's forty minutes in the game because he's well tearing down your entire team. So Dare I mean they're still doing just fine. They have a lot of time have like what 20 25 minutes left before they start to like decline in power but really they gotta kill this morphling because if they kill him once or twice that 20 to 25 minutes becomes 30 to 35 minutes they kill him like five times then all of a sudden he's not a problem anymore or he's not as much of a problem looks like era he wants in on nose long range reality rift popping off that ghost walk instantly Voker's been pretty good about using that Ghost Walk. Really, Fnatic still without the Sentry Wards. I mean, there's one there. Gonna act as both a D Ward and for a future Ghost Walk, maybe? But still, Fnatic letting a couple kills get away from them because of their lack of detection. Nowhere, once again, meeting up with Not a Hacks on the top lane. Doesn't want to use that Darkness, and there's no way of pulling the Sand King out of that invisibility. Who does now have an Epicenter as well as Arcane Boots, so. Not bad, considering what he had to go through. His 0-4, but he still has Arcane Boots, which is... I don't know how he got 1,000 Gs through all that, but that's pretty impressive that he did. Hawkeye is 4 for 1, though, so Dare... They do have the kill advantage, albeit barely. So they're just farming up. They're getting... Are they getting more farm? I do believe they are. Well, maybe not, because No-Tail is jungling up, and all the jungle camps from the dare side are not being killed right now, so it's purely lane farm. You can see Grumpy and Zavadoom in this mid lane not doing much as far as farm goes, giving an all to nose, which I mean that's exactly what they should be doing. But the supports from Fnatic are getting farmed and they're gonna go for nowhere. Bro strike in, not gonna hit. I think that might be the end of this gank. He's gonna pop off that darkness and he's gonna run for it. Not a hacks uh, I don't think that was a maxed out burst strike when he actually casted it. I think that was level three. But even if it wasn't maxed out burst like hell, that should have hit the Night Stalker. There was no reason to miss that. A little bit of a misplay from Fnatic. And now everyone from Darer, they're going to push down this mid lane. No Tail's going to take a little bit of harassment from Hawkeye, but you got to watch out for that burst strike. Not a hack. Unfortunately, missing the burst strike again. Hawkeye's going to run right back into it, though, as the fight is breaking out. Grumpy does have a Ravage. Is he going to use it for not a hack as well as Fitzy? There it goes. Going to hit both of them, and now Fitzy's going to get bursted down real quickly. Wait for him in from Schneckles. He does have a double damage rune, so we could dish the damage pretty good. Nose is going to barely escape as the burst strike is actually instead going to go onto Hawkeye. So they let the Invoker walk away in exchange for the Bounty Hunter. I feel like they could have gotten both if Schneckles chased down the Invoker a little bit more aggressively. So Fnatic losing two in exchange for two. Um, it's pretty much a wash. Uh, well, I guess support for support versus, like, not really support for not really support. We'll favor Fnatic a little bit in that engagement, but they should have gotten more. The Invoker survived with, like, sub-100 health. Just needed one more hit from the Morphling and held the, uh, 
stun on the bounty hunter from the CK as well as the Sanking. He wasn't going to get out of there anytime soon. So Fnatic kind of making a couple of misplays. And keep in mind that Nowhere was... <sighs> he was nowhere to be found in that last fight. Yes, I know, guys. I know. Nowhere. Why do you have a name like that, man? Not a hack's gonna finally get that burst strike into the epicenter. Chain stun off a two second chain stun. And is Night Stalker durable to survive this? Not enough with Schneckles adding his power as well. Sunstrike is gonna hit perfectly on the King, Making it a one for one trade. Not in favor of Darrow, but at least they got something out of this. Nose gonna look for something. And Sob Doom taking a split earth. He's gonna unleash his ultimate before he does go down. But Night Stalker has brought back to the game. Teleportation in. No teleportation, actually. He's going to go to the top lane because clearly that's where all the action is. But Fnatic picking off a couple of heroes for free. Good on them. Make sure they get the picks. The Morphling still has yet to die. Era has yet to die since last I checked. So both of these heroes are going to be really big. I want to getting Manta style. That's a little bit silly there. But both of the carry heroes from Fnatic are going to be really big and dare. I mean, they're taking trades, they're getting kills, but I don't know if it's actually enough. Because the kills that they're getting, even though they're they're uh, kind of buffed with the track, they're not getting the kills on the important targets. So, I mean, they're gaining a lot, but they could be gaining more with the enemy losing more. So, making a uh, larger gain swing, if you will. So, Dara, I mean, they need to get more of these ganks off. But more importantly, they need to get Schneckles, they need to kill Era. Because those are really the problematic heroes. All the other ones, I mean, yes, they are very annoying. Edict does a lot of damage, Burst Strike Epicenter could kill you. But uh, they they have to settle for the late game. they got to invest for that time period, and they're not doing so right now. So Dara, this game still going pretty well for them, but they got to make something happen. Either by pushing down some Tier 2 Towers, which all of them are still up. And now Night Darkness. Oh, cool. That was. I clicked it and he actually casted it. He heard me. Awesome. Because that is how. That is definitely how time works. Not a hack. Looking for a Burrow Strike onto Nose. Not going to find it though. If that Burrow Strike did land, he's probably going to die. Epicenter not up for another 18 seconds though. So, would have been a little bit close. And Invoker has a ton of movement speed as well. Doesn't have the Wex maxed out. Has been going for an Exhort heavy build. And does have those two Forge Spirits, so a little bit of Sieging Power coming out from those. But Derry, they're going to go for some Magic Immunity and everything, which is great. BKB on Night Stalker, pretty much 100% needed. But still, who's going to be doing the damage from Derry? The Invoker is doing decent, I guess. The Burst from Jet Bounty Hunter is still pretty good. But he's going for a defensive item as well as the Night Stalker. Both going for the same defensive item, actually. So they're definitely going to be able to survive in the fights, but will they be able to bring down the enemies in time? It's definitely going to be close. It's definitely going to be close, but uh, yeah, we, we, have, we are 23 minutes into the game, so this game is still fairly young. Roshan still untouched this game. I don't think any team have been really making enough kills to feel safe in going to that Roshan pit. Is that just going to be a slow siege on this mid lane? All of Dara are here. Nighttime is still active for quite a long time. You know, that's a artificial darkness, so you can't really tell what time it is. Push and Echoes is going to take a heal on the tail, and Silence is there, and the Sunstrike. Is there enough burst damage? Mantis is going to save him from that Sunstrike as he gets teleported back to the base from Chen. By Chen. But they know that the Morphling is healing, so he's not going to be in this fight for a little bit. Nowhere tanking up the tower, you got the Forge Spirits, you had the Plague Wards, and a little bit of right click damage coming from all the teammates as well. So there goes the tower, Bro Strike in from Not a Hack, so there's an instant dust though. Grumpy looking for that Ravage, he's going to hit all four heroes with that Ravage. There goes the Lestract, there goes the Sand King, now No Tail on the run. Schneckles has arrived back into this fight with a double damage rune, so he could make something happen here still without those two heroes. But without that Epicenter, I mean, it could be really dicey. Metamancer doesn't have his ultimate Ravage, was of course used. Fnatic losing two after doing like a semi engagement. So it's a perfect ravage there from the Tide Hunter. Hit four, two which are which were very vulnerable to attack, and two which were a threat, but they were uh, not really vulnerable to attack, but they were just kept out of that fight using that stun duration. So that's pretty much the ideal ravage situation for Dara. 
good from them. Those picks, that's exactly what they got to do. Keep pushing this bot lane tower, which is very weak. Top lane tower has yet to really be pushed down, but you got to take that gold. You got to take that gold. Make your team a lot more stronger in this early stage of the game, where we're 25 minutes in. And Dara, they could do it. I mean, their pushing power you saw is not the most direct pushing power. I mean, they don't have an edict. But still, they do have a lot of sieging power with the Plague Wards. With the oh, Hawkeye is going to take a lot of damage from Shneckles. Instantly pop off the invisibility, though. The Morphling is not going to get that kill. What is Era doing? Era is farming Ancients. But Dara, yeah, they, do have, they do have the sieging potential. They do have a lot of tanking power in the front lines. Night Stalker as well as Tidehunter. Pretty beefy, both heroes. So they could siege down towers like nobody's business. Problem is, they got to watch out for this epicenter because now a Blink Dagger somehow is up from out of hacks. I mean, it's 26 minutes blink, 26 minute blink dagger, not the fastest, but considering he's 063, he's been dying like every single fight. I don't know how he's getting the money for this, but hey, he has it. Proof is in the pudding. And that could completely ruin Dara's day. Voker, they run into Chen and cyclone him up into the air. Looks like Fnatic, they've been making a little bit of space on the mid lane, pushing that out, sending some skeletons. Gonna add to that momentum into the mid lane. Trying to force Dara back and trying to distract them from the main goal, which is Roshan, but knows a little bit smarter than that. He's gonna send in some of those Forge Spirits, start lowering the armor of the enemy, but Roshan's already taking a lot of damage. Grumpy on the high ground, not with the Ravage for another 5 seconds. There goes the Lashrak immediately, Deafening Blast Meteor. Gonna push Knuckles up to the high ground. He's got a wave for him back in, but no not hacks. Does get a pretty good epicenter off, dropping the nose down pretty low. Ravage now finally up from Grumpy. Gonna kill that Sand King. Era taking a lot of damage as well. Gonna pop out the Phantasm, but Shekels has returned back into the fight. But Era, I mean, he's waited too long, I feel. Schneckles is trying to do a little bit of work first and know where he is going to pick him off. Hawkeye's still alive. Salvadoom still alive for Dara as Schneckles is trying to run away. Era, I don't know how he escaped. I think that was a Chen teleport back. But Dara crashing the party, using that Deafening Blast Meteor combo in these tight corridors and even pushing the Morphling up on the high ground. I do believe it was a little bit of a mistake for the Morphling to stay up there for so long. I clicked on him, I saw he had that waveform, so he could have just gone right down and added a lot more damage to the fight. But Fnatic, they lose a couple of heroes' buybacks. Tidehunter bought back. We can actually just check buyback status. No. Uh, one, two buybacks. Two buybacks. Okay. Both from the Dara side, so a fairly even fight, I gotta say. I don't like net worth. I'd rather check gold per minute. But Era is now returning to this fight. Schneckles is still sticking around. This Roshan is slowly getting dropped by Dara. With the Invoker here, they should be able to take it. And there it goes. The Aegis is acquired by the Invoker. Schneckles is going to wait for him straight in. Era with the Phantasm already popped. Going to go straight for Salvajum. He is going to bring down this Venomancer and take a gale before he does go down. Schneckles and Era looking for more, but Hawkeye is going to escape. And Nose is also going to escape. So picking off that Venomancer, but they have lost the... What the hell? Is he going to get hit by that? No. Oh, no, there it was, but he didn't get hit by it. Disjoint. So they do pick out the Venomancer, but uh, Dara, they got the Roshan, so that's definitely going to mean that Dara are a little bit happier about that trade, because Venomancer, he's Venomancer. <laughs> he's used to dying, but Roshan is worth a lot more gold to the entire team, plus the Aegis on top of that. And Fnatic, I mean, they had a decent chance there, but I mean, Morphling waiting a little bit too long on the high ground, CK kind of getting pushed all over the place, and then Sand King's Epicenter, a uh, very average Epicenter on just the Invoker, really. Combined with the fact that the Lashrak dropped before the fight even began, like the high ground, he was, Tidehunter was right here, or right here, and Lashrak was right here, and he got hit by the Anchor Smash over the edge, and he was instantly taken down before the fight even started, didn't get a single spell off. That fight, not ideal for Fnatic, but I mean, they do lose Roshan, they're going to regret that Sunstrike on a huge damaging combo onto Era. Will he drop from this? He's tanky enough, and he's going to get sent back to the base. If that was anyone else but the Chaos Knight, I'm pretty sure they would have been dead. Era is really, uh, he's really tanky, guys. Mantis style, not the most common first pickup for the CK. Usually you do see a little bit more bulk, but Mantis style, I mean, usually is picked up by Agility Heroes because it has that Yasha component. But the movement speed on the Chaos Knight is not bad, but the Illusions is really the thing he wants. I do feel like it's better to get a little bit more straight up damage on the Chaos Knight, and if you can mix damage, tankiness, uh, Vanguard, Heart, or even an Armlet, I feel like that's a little bit superior to the Mantis style. But the CK, 
I mean, he sees the Dara side. They have some decent AoE spells in the Invoker and the Tidehunter. But those spells have pretty long cooldown. You'll only be seeing them once in a fight. So if you get your illusions out after those spells actually land, then those illusions will last forever. And the illusions, of course, for Chaos Knight do follow that reality rift. So that makes the illusions a little bit stronger, eliminating the weakness of the illusions in that, or the usual weakness in illusions in that they have not as much sticking power as the original hero. But as we push the 30 minute mark, let's take a look at the gold and experience chart. 10,000 in favor of Darer with the tower advantage. Yeah, they have uh, one tower in advantage plus a couple kills. The XP is going to show more advantage into Darer. But keep in mind though, just keep saying it. Yeah, keep saying it. Darer, they're on a clock. They're doing very well so far. They've got to make sure not to get complacent. they got to keep staying active on the farm. This is exactly what they got to do. Invoker with a giant AoE combo. Look for the Morphling. Yule Scepter to set up. Yule Scepter to set up. Waveform away from Schneckles. Not the longest, though, so he's still getting chased. There's Hawkeye to cut him off, and there's going to drop a rock. Deafening Blast onto Schneckles. He's going to get burned down. Hand of God. Not enough to save him, and there's the finally first kill onto the Morphling. Dara getting it at the perfect chance, too. Their knight has been popped, and they're all in the top lane, so this tier 2 tower is going to go down. Morphling does have a lot of gold for buyback, but he's only going to use that if Dara pushes to the tier 3s. I do feel like Dara... They, what the hell? His courier changed? No, that's the courier that they have from the beginning. Never mind, I'm thinking of something else. They're going to take down this tower. Teleportation from the Night Stalker going to go back to the bottom where Era has been pushing that. So Dara don't want to make a trade. They should be fine to take this tower and leave, though. Bro Strike into the Not Hacks. Missing once again. He does have the Epicenter available to him. Rug Grumpy has Ravage. And he's going to use that as well. Schneckles is going to take a huge amount of damage. Going to get lower to about 800 HP. But he's Strength Morphing. He should be fine. There's the Reality Rift on Savage Doom. Oh my god. That's like 100 to 10% at with one hit. And Emission does ultimately pick up the Chen with the Poison Damage combined with these uh, Forge Spirits in the back end. And Hawkeye. I don't know what the hell you're doing there, but you gotta get out, man. Everyone's coming for you. Waveform, trying to get the Morphling a little bit closer, but he's gonna walk out of there. Stomp, unfortunately, not in range. And Dara losing the Venomancer. They did pick up the tower, though, so that's pretty much what they wanted. Now 21 for 15. Night Soccer did bail out on that, and then daytime is about halfway through. So Dara successfully making a push when they're not at their strongest. And the Ravage from Tidehunters. The Ravages from Tidehunters. Tidehunters so far have been absolutely beautiful, hitting like three and f three or four people constantly. Now Era has spotted out that Tidehunter. Reality Rift's gonna pull him back. CK gonna throw a three second stun onto him, trying to get in front for a little bit of body blocking, popping off that man style. Grumpy is trying to get out of here, but the Adapter Strike will cancel that off. And the Reality Rift bonus damage will bring down that Tidehunter as Fnatic take a free pick there, putting it onto the CK. Tidehunter's dead, this Ravage is down. They push down this tier two on the top lane. It's already sitting at about half HP. So it is a very, very viable uh, tower that they could procure. Dark Green's not there, actually. Era went... Wait, that's... That's a wave... That's a Morphling. It's a fake. They should really color it the same thing as the... Uh, the Morphling color instead of the Replicate color. I feel like that would make more sense. I, am I wrong? Do you get... I mean... <laughs> I, I feel like it'll make a lot of sense. Whatever. Stylistic choices, I suppose. I just gotta get used to that. It'll make, I feel like it'll make more sense. It'll definitely make more sense. Nose is going to run into a whole mess of enemy heroes. Bro Strike from out of hacks is gonna finally land. There it goes. Fitzy a little bit out of range, though, for that split earth. He's gonna hit nonetheless because Nose walked right back into it. And now, uh, everyone from Nag, they're going to be fine. They're gonna get sent back to the base. Fitzy, at least. As Hawkeye is chasing down some of Chen's creeps. He's got himself a Desolator plus a BKB. This track gold from the Bounty Hunter. Absolutely huge. Usually Bounty Hunter doesn't go for these damaging types until he gets a lot of farm. But he somehow did get a lot of farm. So Dara, they're extending their effective... Uh, oh, Frog. Frog. Frog is going to make it out. But they're extending the effectiveness of their heroes by getting damage on those who usually can't afford it. Night Stalker, I mean, does he have more than the Night Stalker? He doesn't have more than the Night Stalker. How is... How the hell is the Bounty Hunter so farmed? 724. What? He has less gold per minute, but he has, like, more net worth. Than oh, wait, no, 3,800. Yeah, that, that explains everything right there. Nose in the bottom lane is going to try to hold on to this bottom tower. Schneckles in era. Is this era? No, is it? Yes, it is, but he's very low on HP. Schneckles is going to take a gush, as well as have his armor dropped very low by these Forge Spirits, but 
the replicate out will mean that he will escape for now. Oh, the meteor creeps get out of the way. Oh, you got it. You hate to see that happen. It's just, it's so brutal, and the creeps are too dumb. They don't realize that they can just move. <laughs> Daytime, 2 p.m. So once this nighttime hits, Dara, I'm pretty sure they're just going to group up, take the tier 2 bottom lane, and look for a couple of picks right after that. Because right now, the Night Stalker, woo, going to go for a Heart of Tarrasque, going to be the heavy on the front lines, while the Bounty Hunter is the uh, more soft hero, going to do the damage. Oh no, he's going to run into a whole bunch of Fnatic heroes, though. They get the smoke spelled. There's a chicken, two second stun, plus a Burrow Strike, plus a Stomp from the Centaur, plus a Split Earth, and Hawkeye gets annihilated by Era. Fnatic getting a free pick off there, and no, not a Hax. Deciding to uh, burn some of his mana to D Ward. Sure, why not? Why not? Dare lose one. That's going to delay their push a little bit, but really, uh, the Bounty Hunter will be up by the time that 6 o'clock mark hits. So the Night Stalker will be nighttime. The damage dealer will be up. You can get a lot of minus armor synergy going on there. They got the Gush, they got the Track, and, and you, of course, you got the Desolator on top of that. So, Fnatic, their defenses are going to be uh, really diminished as much as possible. So once that level, once that nighttime hits, that's going to really be Dara's chance. I feel like one of their last chances to make something happen. I mean, they will have chances after this nighttime ends, especially since Darkness is now level 3, so Night Stalker could get a lot of effective time out of that. But still, I mean, when you have so much nighttime, it's pretty easy to make things happen, or it's a lot easier. We have Fitzky returning back into this game. Gold Advantage's experience advantage should still be in favor of Dara. It is. The Gold Advantage is huge, actually. I feel like a lot of that can be attributed to this Bounty Hunter. He's rolling in the dough, getting an extra, well, I mean, he just hit level 16, so an extra 200 gold per participation, per, per track. That's a lot of gold there. I don't think he got many kills pre-level 6. So he's been stacking up a lot, a lot of that track gold for him. Doing pretty well for himself. This bound hitter could deal the damage, but he cannot take it. So ideally, Dara would like to have the Unite Stalker sit in the front lines, absorb all the spells from Fnatic. But Fnatic, they do have a little bit of AoE. They could... I mean, they're pretty easy to change targets on. CK has just stunned the Bounty Hunter instead of stunning the Night Stalker. Seems a kind of intuitive thing to do. And the Morphling, of course, could go to town on whoever he wants to. He does have only a BKB and a Manta style, so he's... Uh, although, what? I feel like... What? How does... I feel like the Bounty Hunter has the most gold on the map, even though the Morphling, he has whatever, I don't know, I don't know, math calculations, item rough pricing things, it's all way too much for me. But I'll trust in the graph, Night Stalker is still in the front, going to go for a hard task, if he gets his hard task by the 6 o'clock mark, that'll make this timing push so much more effective, but Fnatic, uh, the Roshan, not up for another minute and a half, about... Maybe they're looking to kill off this Night Stalker. If they pick him off, that'll be absolutely huge. That'll prevent the timing push from Dare. And really, this is going to be their most scary push. I mean, first night time is pretty scary for the Night Stalker, but at this point with the team comp that they have now, this, what, third night time, I believe? Or fourth? Uh, no, it's third night time. Third real night time is going to be the deadliest one for them. They're all grouped up in the mid lane. Smoke looking for a pick off, and it's going to be Schneckles, the worst possible one for Fnatic to lose. The track bonus will get him closer. They're instead going to settle for the creeps, it looks like. No, the Hex from long range. Nose does have a sheep stick. Schneckles can get sent back to the base, though, so he should be fine. Creeps from the Chen are going to be the only casualties here. But hey, it's pretty much a pick off. I mean, those creeps are pretty much what keeps Chen relevant. And without those, Dare have a huge opportunity to make something happen right now. Top lane is getting pushed in, but with tower still, uh, it's pretty pretty much alive. <laughs> it's kind of weak, but it should be okay. They're going to make a push onto the tier 3s. Will they be able to do this, though? they got to watch out for this epicenter, so keep an eye on this Sand King. Where is Sand King, actually? He's all the way on the bot lane. Dare, they're slowly going to push this in, again, with seeding power. Morphling going to get sent back to the base by Chen, I believe. Yeah, that was a test of faith harassment there. But they're very persistent, the Dara side. They're going to keep laying down more Plague Wards on this tower. 
slowly getting worked down. And this night time is going to last freaking forever. Duration 80 seconds on top of the 6 minute night cycle, I believe. Thanks. And a cooldown of 120. So that's only a 40 second dead time. So that night, this night time will last a long time. You'll step around to the Morphling. Too many creeps there. I'm also going to hex him up. He's going to force another test of faith. It's Dara. There's trying to put as much damage to this tower as possible. It's working. It's slowly taking more and more chip damage. Now down to half HP, and nowhere has breached the high ground. Forge Spirits, as well as those Plague Wards, slowly doing work. There's the Epicenter, only hitting on Salva Doom though, not even killing him. Waveform from the Morphling, trying to make stuff happen. The Ravage is there, holding out Era Fitzky, and there's a Deafening Blast Meteor onto Nada Hacks, as well as Era. Going to pop out the Phantasm, try to go to work. Hawkeye doing a lot of damage to that Morphling, but he's going to take a Burrow Strike. He's not before killing that hero though. Sanking does go down. The Bounty Hunter has gone down, and the Tide Hunter has gone down as well. Reality Rift not going to latch onto Hawkeye. He's now on the run. And Era wants him dead. Sunstrike not getting on anyone. And Schneckles still very much alive. You get sent back to the base. Era still on the chase from nowhere, but you cannot chase down a Night Stalker. It's simply impossible. And Dare lose two in exchange for one, even though the Sand King had pretty much like <laughs> the worst epicenter possible. Oh no, they're not done yet. Era is going to go toe to toe with da with nowhere. It should be able to win this. The Dare side should have the favor here, but here comes the Morphling trying to equalize things. Savadoom does go down nowhere, trying to kill Era, sent back to the base by Chen. It is going to be just in time. Now Split Earth, Fitzky's trying to line it up. Split Earth does land on Nose, and Nose is going to go down as well. It's like loaning himself to try to buy himself a little more time, but he gets a Ice Wall, which is definitely not what he wants to have happen. Nowhere, still alive, but he's also very, very quick, so he should be able to escape this. Schneckles not with the waveform for another five seconds, so Nowhere is going to be fine, especially with the misprediction there, but Dara getting completely thrashed. Tidehunter with the Ravage, I mean, it was mostly used because Schneckles dived right on in, but that BKB, I don't know if it caught Tidehunter by surprise or something like that, but the BKB on the Morphling really doing work there. That was the first charge of BKB, so that's pretty much the ideal usage of that first charge. Now with the uh, that effective team wipe, Fnatic, they're going to look towards the Roshan. Is this the first Roshan? No, this is the second Roshan, but Error has a Heart of Tarras. Night Stalker doesn't. Nowhere. Where's your Heart of Tarrasque, man? The Roshan is slowly getting worked down. Two heavy to heavy damage dealers there. Should be able to take it down without any sort of trouble from the enemy team. Roshan will go down. Really, I feel like one of the huge influences for Fnatic has been this Chen, really. I mean, like Hand of God, as well as the mech, they're kind of expected, like whenever you play a Chen, but really, it's been the uh, sendbacks that have been making things happen. I mean, Era getting sent back, and really everyone just taking so much fire, and then getting sent back at the last possible second. That's pretty much the ideal usage for that spell. If everyone's at 1 HP, 0 mana, and they get sent back, well, that is perfect, perfect for Fnatic. And so far, this Chen has been completely on point. Even without any creeps in that previous fight, he's been doing some pretty good work even though his score might not reflect it. So this Chen with the send backs, very, very important, but Dara, they're not done yet. They do still have a Ravage up. The Epicenter is up as well, but it's a level 3 Oh no, it's a level 2 Ravage. Okay, I'm completely wrong. They're instead going to smoke up. Hard Trask has been picked up from the Night Stalker. They're going to run into Era. Era is tanky with that age, but he's not invulnerable. Instant Hex there. Gale, as well as Sunstrike, and Era's going to take a ton of damage. Going to burn through that ages very quickly. Here comes Nada Hax, though. Going to blink right in with that Burst Strike. Hit everyone. Mech does pop off, though. Ravage hitting onto Era, as well as Sand King. Sand King immediately drops. There's a Phantasm for Era, as well as the Mantis style. So many CKs. Fitzky is going to be the target. He's going to uh, just barely survive, actually. Hawkeye on the chase, but Era with the army is making a complete wall. Impossible for Dara to breach through. Nose is going to lay down an ice wall, slow down Era just a little bit. And who is this? Hawkeye is still chasing down the Lestrak. Lestrak actually did manage to escape. Hawkeye now in a huge amount of trouble. Waveform in, and one more hit from Schneckles will do it. You know, replicate a little bit closer, and there goes Hawkeye. It's a fanatic. They've evened up the score. Even though it is nighttime, the CK with his army. I mean, usually when you cast illusions, it's to do damage. It's not to confuse the enemy. But when you have that many... It's absurd how much confusion is on the enemy team. Oh no, Chen, Sunstrike, Deafening Blast, and the right click should be enough. So Dara finding a free pick there. Now they gotta watch out though, because Era is pissed, and he is right here. Crits onto Nose. He's gonna take a uh, cold snap, two second stun onto that Invoker. Split Earth is going to chain as well. Schneckles has arrived to do the extra damage, and Nowhere is going to run away now. Drum has been popped by someone, and they're gonna bail out of there. Dara losing the. Uh, picking up the Chen in exchange for the Invoker. Never a good trade there, and I feel like this might be the end of the line for Dara. I mean, yes, the score is still even, 
but you can see the huge lack of damage as the bounty hunters getting kited around the Chen again with the sendbacks doing so much work. The bounty hunter with the track bonus movement speed doesn't have enough burst damage to instantly take someone down. But that's really what he needs to be doing right now. He needs to pick off someone and then hopefully he'll be able to find the right, the real CK, which, I mean, good luck. How many illusions? Two illusions, then three illusions. That's a pretty big army of Chaos Knights, plus a replicate on top of that. I guess the replicate is pretty easy to tell which one's real and which one belongs to the Morphling. But still, the CK is going to be absolutely dishing. And Dara, where's their damage coming from? Night Stalker is going to get that hard to rasp, and the only real source of damage is coming out from this bounty hunter who has a Desolator. But other than that, oh, Burst Strike, you know, and a Savadoom blocked into the corner as well. Three Nick Sun, as well as Split Earth, Savadoom is going to go down. Chen with a Tornado picking that up, really? Really? Was that this guy? I think it was this guy. But Fnatic, I do believe they've survived long enough so that their Morphling and CK can be the large damage dealers. Morphling picked up a heart of Tarrasque. There's a blink in, burst strike for onto nose, two seconds stun to chain off, split earth gonna latch as well, and the nuke from Chen is gonna finish him off. Grumpy on the front lines, taking a lot of damage, reality rifting him back. He's gonna die. No, he's gonna burn the ravage, but purely defensively, the burst strike from not a hacks, not gonna be enough to kill off Grumpy. He's gonna now be in a huge amount of danger. He's gonna drop diving that tower. But Fnatic, I mean, as I was saying, <laughs> I think they've weathered the storm long enough. They've survived the early mid stages of the game, and Night Stalker, although he is now trying to get a little bit of damage, I mean, let's see, let's take, keep an eye on him and see how much damage he does to the enemy team. It's not going to be that huge. Morphling is doing quite a bit of damage, plus has a ton of utility, plus illusions. And of course, CK is just holding the front line like a boss. He has an entire army under his control, and if an army can't hold the front line, then, well, you need a different army. Nicknower is actually doing decent damage during this night phase, but the night time, 1 a.m., it's going to be extended for about two or three more sets of 80 seconds. Actually, quite a few, so he should have a lot more time for that night. But Dara, with their timing push, I mean, it hasn't worked out for them. They had an opportunity where their Night Stalker was extremely powerful, their Bounty Hunter was extremely powerful. Looks like they're going to try to get nowhere. Not going to happen, though. BKB and a, way and a teleport out. There's no way to interrupt that TP aside from the Chen possessing a uh, Troll Warlord. I guess Eric could do it also, going for some lifesteal. CK is pretty much the definition of a strength carry. <laughs> Impossible to kill, persistent damage output, and yeah, he's eating tower shots like nobody's business. Nowhere he's going to go move in, get a Hex onto Era, drop a rock on his head as well. Era taking a lot of damage, but still so tanky. You just turn around with the Phantasm if you wanted to. There's a Phantasm going to go straight for Nowhere. Nowhere is going to kite around just a little bit. Schneckle's in the middle of everything, but there's Nowhere completely surrounded. You have Nowhere to run there. Hawkeye trying to do a little bit of damage as well, but he's going to get worked down by all of the CKs in this map. And with Night Stalker down without buyback, Bounty Hunter down without buyback, and Fnatic with the longevity that they have, they should be able to take Raxes here. Ice Wall going to slow them down just a little bit, and the illusions from Era are no longer up. Looks like instead they're going to go straight for the mid Raxes, where the Venomancer has not set up. I kind of like that cute play from Fnatic. This tower with the level 4 Edict is going to get torn down extremely quickly. Knuckles dropping pretty low in armor, but with so much agility, he should be fine. Bro Strike onto that Invoker. Big Split Earth as well. Ravage not going to go through that BKB as not a hack. Does get his epicenter off. Not doing any damage to Grumpy, actually, with the pipe perfectly up and going to block pretty much all of that. But they do pick off that Invoker, and then now they're going to concentrate on these mid racks as someone gets sent back. It is going to be the Morphling who dropped very low, but he's going to be just fine. Healing back in the base. The mid racks have gone down, and Dare, I do believe, once again, have lost the chance at this game. Their mid lane power strategy did not work out well enough for them. Needed more ganks on this Morphling, needed more ganks on the CK. Uh, Morphling has died once since I last checked, and Era hasn't died at all. Really? Chen. He's Chen. Just Chen, man. He's been, he's been doing work. So Dara once again picking up that mid game power strat, not working out for them, unable to finish the game, take a Rax by the time it actually matters. Like they're gonna get no tail, but you know what? Chen dies. That's pretty much a Chen life. I feel like CK, if he had Phantasm, he could just turn around and go to town on these guys. Do it, Era. I mean, look how much damage you're doing to the CK. He's just tanking everything. 
tracking. No, actually, here comes Hawkeye. Arrow's gonna go down here. No, CK. He only has 3,500 to buy back. Oh, no. Oh, run, Sand King. Oh. It's a fake. Did they actually not think no is a fake, but anyway. Fnatic have taken the mid racks. They've taken the top racks. Last order of business is take the bottom racks. I'm really dare. I don't know. They should have just picked up a hard carry. Just pick up an anti age. Pick up a Ricky Maru. And then contest the late game. This Night Stalker hasn't been working out for them. Night Stalker is pretty strong for an early mid game hero, but he definitely falls off. Oh, Schneckel's going to be in a little bit of trouble. He's going to get hexed up, and he's probably going to go down as the rock is dropped on his head. BKB, and away from out, living at 6 HP. Schneckel's trying to run away. Oh my god, is he actually going to make it out? Chen trying to send him back, but the BKB will prevent that. There's the Fisky up into the air, but the Reality Rift onto nowhere, completely surrounded, unable to run, as Night Stalker just gets clubbed down. Four seconds stun onto Sava Doom. Era going to town, not a hack. Going to burrow strike, blink in. Where the hell did that Invoker go? How did he... Did he just... No, who was... that? What? Oh, that was... What? Well, I... Someone was there, and then they just weren't. Oh well. There's the GG well played from Sava Doom as Dara. They've had enough. Oh, Era. With the drums. He's still on the chase. Watch him club down. Oh, come on, not a hack. So that was. How many of those have you missed? The Reality Rift, the Eye of Scotty. Could take the last kill of the game. Fnatic with their late game. Surviving to the point where Dara's early stage will not carry them through. Dare it, I feel like they have to change up their strategy. It hasn't been working for them both times. <laughs> Not Hax knows. He knows that he's been doing bad. It's okay, bro. You still won. Thanks for watching, guys. Dare versus Fnatic in the Star Series Season 3. This one goes to Fnatic with the late game carries. And Dare, I mean, it hasn't been working out for you guys. You try something different. I gotta say, it doesn't really suit your team. But thanks for watching, guys. GG. Holy crap, not a hack. He almost has the Malk Award. 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 So close, so close.